Bill O'Reilly here, Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. China fuming as Nancy Pelosi leaves Taiwan. Joy Behar on ABC News fawning over President Biden. Reporters at the New York Times feuding with management. Sharks descending on the East Coast shoreline. Also ahead, we'll name the products we are all paying more for. But first, China responding to Speaker Pelosi's visit with the Taiwanese. China says it is going to ban food imports from Taiwan and launch military exercises in the waters around the island. The communists also unveiling new threats to America and to Taiwan, all because of Speaker Pelosi's trip, and we don't know exactly why she went there. However, Senator McConnell and 24 other Republicans are praising Pelosi's trip, wrote the lawmakers, quote, America will always defend democracy over autocracy. Comedian Joy Behar comparing President Biden to a Hollywood movie star The View host praising the president after a CIA drone killed al-Qaeda chieftain Zawahiri. Said Ms. Behar, quote, he's like Liam Neeson. That's Mr. Biden. I will find you and I will kill you, unquote. Upon hearing himself being compared to Mr. Neeson, the president allegedly said, who? Who? Some employees at the New York Times feuding with executives. The beef stems from stalled salary negotiations. The reporters won an 8% raise and an option to work from home. The previous contract expired way back in March 21. Readership of the Times down 49% in the last two decades. The average employee at that newspaper earning $99,000 a year. Sharks mingling with swimmers. That is not good. 28 people have been bitten so far this summer. Hot spots include New England, Long Island, and the east coast of Florida. No bites have been fatal. Researchers think the increased population of sharks is a result of clean water and more fish, which the sharks, of course, eat. Polls show 33% of Americans now refuse to swim in the ocean. And the odds of being bitten by a shark? One in four million, about the same as President Biden's re-election chances. In a moment, the Biden inflation scorecard. Right back. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, the inflation scorecard. And remember, there was very little inflation until Joe Biden was elected president. Under Donald Trump, Inflation ran about 1.4%. Now it's approaching 10%. So here are some of the products that have gone up in price. Let's begin with Honda and Toyota vehicles. They are up 4%. Paper towels, Bounty, 5% up. Skippy peanut butter, 5% up. Oreo cookies, 7% higher. Tide laundry detergent, 8%. Subway sandwiches, 9%. Huggy diapers, 10% up. General Electric light bulbs, 14% increase. Home Depot supplies across the board, 15%. Wonder Bread, up 16%. Boar's Head bacon, up 17%. Tropicana fruit and juice, up 20%. A hotel room at Marriott, up 29%, and used cars across the board, up a whopping 35%. Now, that's not all. We are getting shrinkflation. That's where you get less in the bag than you used to, but you don't know. And I don't know. So, we go in to buy some Doritos, right? Well, we're getting 5% less. Crest toothpaste, 7% down. General Mills cereal, 10%. Hershey's chocolate, 11%. Hefty garbage bags, down 11% from what it used to be. Gatorade, 12% less. Folgers coffee, 20% less. Breyer's ice cream, 25%. 
Walmart paper towels down 28%. So this is painful, especially if you are a working American. You got kids, you've got bills, you've got all of this, and it's a tax. This is what most Americans don't understand. So we're all paying 10% more to live. And I didn't even get into the gas and the fuel and the air conditioning and the heating of the homes. We didn't even get into that. So we are really paying more than 10% since Joe Biden has become the president of the United States. That's a tax. It comes right out of our pocket. And yeah, you can cut back. I guess you can cut back. But most Americans don't live extravagantly. So this is a disaster across the board. And it's also a disaster for the Democratic Party and Mr. Biden himself. I told you he is not going to run again. That's not going to happen. And he may not even make his first term. It depends how bad it is in the midterm elections in November. If the Democrats get wiped out across the board, lose the House and the Senate, then Biden becomes a lame duck. He's not going to be able to do anything, and I would not be surprised to see him resign because of, quote, health reasons, unquote. So there's nothing good about this, and I'm happy that I could bring you the cold facts because you need to know them. I'm Bill O'Reilly. I approve the message by writing it. If you'd like more honest, fact-based analysis, please go to BillOReilly.com and consider my book, Killing the Killers, a great summer read. In a moment, something you might not know. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. 530 years ago today, explorer Christopher Columbus began his first voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. 36 days later, he arrived in the New World but he didn't know it was the new world. So Columbus is widely acknowledged as discovering America. He really didn't. The Vikings did. But polls show nearly half of Americans do not know the history of Columbus. Here is the true story behind his journeys. After working as a sailor for two decades, Columbus believed he knew a better route to Asia. To reach the Far East, go west. He lobbied monarchs across Europe, finally securing money from the Spanish crown. That's Ferdinand and Isabella. They agreed to finance him, offering Columbus the title of governor for any territory he discovered. On August 3rd, 1492, the Italian explorer set sail with a crew of 90 men. Five weeks later, they landed in what is now the Bahamas. The Europeans first thought they were in Japan, China, or India. The men sailed the Caribbean, meeting the island's native population. Wrote Columbus in his journal, quote, These men ought to make good and skilled servants, for they repeat very quickly whatever we say to them, unquote. The next year, 1493, Columbus returned to Spain. He was granted the title Admiral of the Ocean. During his lifetime, Columbus led a total of four expeditions to the New World, but he never accomplished finding a route to Asia. The Admiral died in 1506 at the age of 55. Doctors believe he perished from syphilis. And here's something else you might not know. Old Columbus is not as popular as he used to be. According to a poll published by Newsweek magazine, 80% of American college students want Columbus canceled. In October 2021, last year, President Biden officially declared the second Monday in October be celebrated as Indigenous Peoples Day. So Columbus is out. However, many states and counties still celebrate Columbus Day honoring Italian Americans back after this. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.